EOS is a medical imaging system dedicated to the imaging of osteoarticular pathologies, hip, knee, back, and the orthopedic surgeries associated. The system combines a Nobel Prize winning low dose X ray detector and proprietary software technology that produces 3D modeling of the patient's bones from just two radiographs. EOS enables whole body frontal and lateral images to be acquired simultaneously in a natural standing or seated position with very low radiation dose and no compromise on image quality. In less than 20 seconds, two full body digital radiographs are taken. From those two images, a 3D bone envelope can then be obtained together with precise 3D anatomical information opening the way to advanced therapeutic planning and control of orthopaedic treatments. One of the most important things that I uh, was able to detect when I first looked at the EOS solution was that it was complementary to the tools that we already have for imaging the body. And most importantly, when we're looking at the skeleton, it's important to try to image the patient standing up. That's possible with conventional X-ray radiography, whether it's computed or digitised, um, but normally with CT and MRI, it's not possible. So EOS provided a way of using X-ray technology to acquire an image of the whole standing skeleton and display it as a frontal and lateral scan, which was a very important tool in trying to understand the causes of pain in the skeleton, which normally occur when we stand. The EOS system uses some very important technological advances, which aren't immediately evident when you look at the machine, but inside there is a very advanced form of detector which, as we know, came from the Sharpak detector technology developed for CERN. One of those benefits of it is that it is very much more sensitive to the uh, uh, irradiation coming into it than conventional detectors, which allows us to use a lower dose. From the point of view of our referring clinicians, be it surgeons, general practitioners, or even the specialists allied to medicine like physiotherapists, the importance of the AOS system is that for the first time they will have a fully documented objective measurement of the spinal and pelvic parameters, of limb lengths, of orientation of the limbs uh, which are relevant to conditions relating to pain in the spine or painful joints. When the patient is confronted with the AOS scanner they see a very friendly environment. They don't have to uh, strip off necessarily, they can stand in their ordinary clothes in what is like a small telephone booth. So the presentation to the patient is actually quite non-clinical. They're asked to stand still only for a minimum amount of time. The impact of AOS in my clinical practice was immediate and is continuing to grow. I think one of the things that people need to appreciate is when you are taking on board a piece of revolutionary equipment, the impact it's going to have on your practice. And from my prospect, it's not just the sighting of the equipment, it's also how to use it, learning what to use with the data that it gives out and also learning to work with a group of clinicians who will take action on that data. Reducing exposure dose to, to, to patient is one of the major challenge uh, for our profession. Um, our modality in terms of diagnosis has a big yield but before of its success we're increasing the number of examination and so the the problem is that the burden of radiation is increasing and therefore, uh, of course, there may be side effects and we are much more aware of this. So for us, one of the major issues is to do better with less radiation. Especially in Europe now, uh, we have regulatory uh, obligation uh, which is a very simple principle which says that you should use the minimal dose uh, which is necessary to achieve one special diagnosis. This is the ALARA concept which means as low as reasonably achievable. What we have achieved recently and we have published uh, show that we can diminish the dose achieving the microdose by a factor of six. The optimization of microdose was set up especially for scoliosis uh, in the, the adolescent population, so it's, it's, it's really high. And 
the population is at risk, especially in adolescence, because you, uh, you have the growth spur, and so the curvature can double or triple. So you have to have a very good monitoring at this period. And of course, you do, can do this only by doing repeated ra radiographs to measure the curvature and to set up the appropriate treatment. Therefore, you need to have repeated x-ray every four or six months. But really, in the adolescence, it will be every four months, frontal and lateral view. So you can see the burden. So moving for repeated monitoring uh, with a very precise method, and since we have very good angle measures and low dose, would allow us to have better follow-up. The technique and the technology has been really spectacular also from just the standpoint of giving us beautifully clear images. So the image quality is superior to what I had with digital radiography. Uh, and this capacity to make a three-dimensional reconstruction from those two x-rays obtained simultaneously and in this registered perpendicular frame. The EOS system uh, gave us a, a lot of new perspectives on the 3D and uh, the 3D deformity of scoliosis, especially in the in the children. Um, we um, it, it gives us the uh, the possibility of uh, doing a 3D reconstruction of the whole spine in a standing position, uh, using only two views, uh, the PA and the lateral. We can get a 3D reconstruction of the whole spine with the intermediate structures, the disc space, and the vertebral bodies. So when we put those two images together, we find that the EOS reconstruction is really very, very accurate. Within a millimeter of position and within a degree or two of rotation. I am using this technology since 2006, and uh, I have the experience about uh, 3,000 of patients. We use EOS for diagnosis, of course, to understand what is uh, the problem of the patient and for planning of uh, our uh, surgeries. But I think what is very important is the communication with the patient. For the first time, the patient is able to see uh, the whole skeleton. So the patient understands much easier what we say. And uh, to, uh, I use this, those images to discuss with the patient, to demonstrate what is the problem, and also to explain the different stages of what we do. And as a hip, knee, and spine surgeon, sometimes we are to decide if we begin using uh, spine surgery at first, or hip or knee surgeries at first. So I think it is a, really a key point. This man was operated, uh, he had the previous posterior fusion, and you see that he has imbalance. Is it due to the spine, to the hip flexum, or to the knee flexum? You have to discuss with him to convince him to do the correction at the spine level. With those images, it is very easy to explain him the, the global situation. It is also very easy to explain him the final result. You see, we did only the spinal correction, the wedge osteotomy, and you see that this spinal correction induced a correction of the lower limbs, doing nothing on the lower limbs. So it's easy to explain previously, but also to explain the result postoperatively. For spine surgery, the analysis of the sagittal and frontal balance is uh, a key point for scoliosis, for uh, osteotomies in the case of cases of correction of uh, imbalance. In uh, degenerative pathologies of hip and knee, it is also very important to have the full image of the patient for the planning of, uh, and the adjustment of the prosthesis. My practice has really changed with EOS because initially we used small X-ray and we had difficulties to have uh, simultaneously the AP and the lateral view of the patient. For example, for the spine, it is absolutely mandatory to have those two views to uh, decide the correction and to understand also the failures. For the hip, most of the surgeons only use the AP view and it has been a fight for me to convince my colleague of the interest of the lateral view. Now, uh, all of the surgeons around me are convinced of the interest of this lateral view. And what bring, uh, could bring us this uh, concept was the EOS.